I didn't have a chance to report on this, but the other day, it was revealed by various sources, including that park place, that Sweet Baby Inc. is partnering with a company called the Pal Group in order to push the woke agenda. Well, there's been a lot of changes in development happening since then, including the discovery that the Pal Group is essentially scrubbing all evidence of this partnership. So I don't know if there's some kind of conspiracy that they, they got busted and now they're you know, covering their tracks after having this whole exposure here. But we're going to talk about it today. So the Pal Group is essentially a group that posted on LinkedIn that I guess they're like a DEI consulting group as well that are woke. And they posted this LinkedIn thing saying they believe you need diverse voices to solve diverse problems. Together with our partners at Sweet Baby Inc., we provide sensitivity and authenticity consulting at every stage of development. We connect you to an inclusive and knowledgeable team of consultants to best bring your story to life. So again, it's one of these companies that comes in there and they have to make everything about your story more politically correct. If there's not enough gay characters, if there's not enough people of color in your story, if it's not diverse enough, if they feel that there's too many white men in it, they come in and they basically wokeify it. And I know a lot of people get it all, oh, well, it's not, that's not woke, that's not woke. No, it's appealing to a modern audience. So that makes it woke, okay? When you have to cater to this quote-unquote modern audience that doesn't exist, that that's exactly what woke is. It's shoehorning and force-feeding stuff to fill a narrative, to to go along with an agenda. That's That's exactly what it is. If it's natural, if you have great writing, if you have great character development with it, then okay. So be it. I don't care if there's a black character or a female, but when you have to have a consulting group come in just so you can hit little check boxes, that's that's where I start to have a problem. And that's basically what I've been calling out for a good portion of this year already. And I know a lot of you guys are tired of it. So you can see this was on their LinkedIn post where they revealed they were working with Sweet Baby Inc. who if everybody, <laughs> if every company out there, everybody who's touched Sweet Baby Inc., they're doomed to fail. They, they literally get a lot of backlash, and, and it's rightfully so because we've seen how some of these employees like Chris Kendred have reached out to people's personal families, to previous places of employment. We've seen them try to shut down websites and censor people. I mean, Smash JT totally had his channel resurrected because of the Streisand effect that Sweet Baby Inc. essentially gave him. They, they gave him all the attention in the world from trying to shut him down, and, you know, he's he's been crushing it. <laughs> with, with with how, uh, you know, big of a reaction that them attacking him gave for his channel. So Sweet Baby Inc. does do exactly what you think it is. And, and a lot of these people, they're making content saying uh, that basically damage controlling. That's what Alyssa Mercante did with the whole Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't do what you guys think it is. And we see all these journalists, all these Wokies come and try to defend it for, for whatever odd reason. But they never really give us anything except that. It's a whole bunch of rage bait grifters that are upset about it and that it's a nothing burger and, and all this stuff. Like they give us all all the reasons except actual evidence uh, of what they don't do and, and they ignore what, what has plenty of evidence of what they've done in the past with their actions and stuff. If they weren't hiding anything, why would they be such a vile amount of people hired there? So they had this right here. And then even in other lo locations, you've seen that they've said they're exactly par par uh, partnering with it. A narrative development and consult consultation studio based in Montreal, working around the globe. And you've seen uh, right on front of the things, a, a literal color, different colored blocks to, I guess, show that they're diverse. That, you know, they're, they're working with their partners at Sweet Baby Inc. To, to connect you to an inclusive and knowledgeable team of consultants. So they're, they're actually essentially boosting them up you can see here they they shared a list of over 1400 game publishers and investors essentially giving them access and and, and resources to expand their reach thousands 1400 people so thousands of publishers here so this partnership is only going to expand it and uh, you know i'm not going to sit here and be like oh they must be stopped they must blah 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 but but their influence on this gaming industry Definitely is taking a turn for the worse when it comes to what we're seeing here and what, what agendas we're seeing push and, and how they interact with people and how they treat others that are calling it out. You know, we're automatically grifters just because 
we're giving our opinion or we're giving them criticism on, on things that they're doing. It's all fair criticism. I've never called for harassment. I've never called to dox. I've never called to give death threats or anything like that. And I can't control what other people do. There's bad seeds in every bunch. And just like how you claim that we don't speak for everybody that's progressive or woke, you don't speak for everybody that's a right winger either. It's all this whole like we have to walk on on eggshells because they're afraid of us inciting people. Well, you guys incite people the most. Anyways, back onto this. Essentially, there's been all sorts of other stuff developing. Smash JT's been covering it. Uh, he did his own thing on here as well. Uh, Master of the TDS was the one that actually brought it to attention. Uh, they're the host of the Gothic Therapy Channel, and they said that it seems like the collaboration between Sweet Baby Inc. and the PAL group is more than just a typical business arrangement. Basically, in according to Smash's article, he says it's a backdoor entry for Sweet Baby Inc. to sneak its way into the hands of more developers, which, again, you take a look at this whole thing right here. It's <laughs> There's more than meets the eye with this. Now, evidently, after all this came out, now an interesting twist happened. Smash talked about this. Master of the TDS talked about this. I've even seen Grums on Twitter talking about this. Essentially, they're scrubbing all evidence of their partnership with Sweet Baby Inc. I don't know if because the heat got too much for them. I don't know if maybe they're doing it to do a little bit of damage control so that, you know, they don't get blacklisted by everybody else that hates Sweet Baby Inc. I don't know if they're getting harassed or whatnot, but it's interesting that just days after Match of the TDS discovered that LinkedIn post, we're seeing evidence of stuff being scrubbed. It just seems kind of convenient. So going on on this article, uh, you can see he even links to Post from Vera Dark. Shout outs to Vera Dark. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at her tweet that says, uh, The Pow Group has removed their Sweet Baby Inc. partnership announcement page. Kind of, kind of strange right here, right? Page doesn't exist. Really strange right here. So he says the Pow Group, Smash JT says the Pow Group pretends to be some sort of major player in the gaming cons consultation war world. Let me get a sip of soda here because my tongue is getting tied. I swear I don't try to fuck up when I speak. But it says uh, they pretend to be some sort of major player in the gaming con consultation world. Recently found itself in the spotlight for its connection with Sweet Baby Inc., a controversial narrative consulting firm that many, himself included, view as a negative influence in the gaming industry. And I, I agree completely, 110%. And, and you know what? I probably would have less of a problem with them if they didn't act like snakes towards... People like Smash and, and contacting former places of employment, uh, getting in bed, obviously, with journalists like Alyssa Mercante, alleged extortion schemes with Game Science and Black Myth Wukong. Like, there's just so much here that, that leans towards that these people are bad, that these people are evil, that they have no integrity. And you see, after publicly announcing a partnership with SBI, the Paul Group seemed to promptly regret its transparency and has since been scrubbed off of anything, off of his website. So no more Sweet Baby Inc. Now, interested enough, the LinkedIn post that we shared, that's been scrubbed as well. So they've cleared everything off of here. That is actually pretty wild, right? Um, so <laughs> you can see, honestly, they're in trouble because... Smash says right here, typically when a company makes this kind of move, they assume the deal could have simply fallen through or was called off. Maybe there was a last minute change of heart or perhaps negotiations didn't go as well as planned. But here you go. We have some reactions. Um, Wizard Ronin saying it's almost like aligning with a sexually deviant, morally corrupt company that hates white men and blackmails other companies was a bad idea. And, and that's what it is. A lot of these companies, even, even on the Sweet Baby Inc. website, they took down their list of clients that included like Square Enix and a couple other developers. They took it down. It, it's not a good look anymore. And I think a lot of companies are starting to see that Sweet Baby Inc. is a problem. Definitely a problem. Uh, and you can see right here, Smash says Sweet Baby Inc. with Sweet Baby Inc. Nothing is ever that straightforward. Their past behaviors, patterns, 
that this partnership wasn't simply abandoned. Instead, it looks clear as day to me that the Powell Group is trying to keep this connection under wraps, likely in response to the backlash that Sweet Baby Inc.'s involvement tends to attract, and for good reason. And, and that's what I, like what I said. Um, Square Enix also did the same thing. They got removed off their website, and we've seen a lot of their projects and clients get removed. And, and even not too long ago, in regards to like Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed and stuff, it's been rumored that a lot of these companies are starting to see that there is a backlash to promoting DEI in your game and, and having consulting companies involved with it to the point where they're starting to, to not even say anything about it. They're going to start not even announcing that, that they're having any of it because now the virtue signal is backfiring immensely. It's, it's backfiring to the point where it's honestly not worth it because more than likely – your game's going to flop. So good articles on this. You can see, basically, they're just saying, uh, this is what happens when you keep an honest conversation going and spread truth. Evil covers and has to pr hide, proving they don't have good intentions. So the POW group no longer publicly announcing that they're part of uh, a partnership with it, a partnership at all with Sweet Baby Inc. So all this is gone. All this is gone right here. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Who knows if this was a full out like, hey, we're backing out or if it's damage control. I'm going to lean into the territory that this is them covering their tracks and that it's 110 percent damage control. And uh, maybe they were getting angry responses on social media. Maybe they were getting harassed or, or hate speech, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think they're covering their tracks immensely. So if you want to read this article from Smash, go to his website, check it out. Um, there's definitely a lot to unpack here, but I think this is just the beginning of the Powell Group's involvement with Sweet Baby Inc. They're hiding it, but I think this is just the, the, the beginning. I think they were legitimately going out there, like everybody else is speculating, and trying to uh, expand on the uh, the reach of that company and, and provide them resources um, that uh, I'm kind of glad fell through, if I'm going to be completely honest. Because, again, we've seen time and time again this last year just, just how how much influence this company has. And, and I don't understand because, again, they're catering to this modern audience that, that legitimately does not exist. Think of Concord. Think of Dustborn. And I say it every video. I say it every video. They don't exist. Nobody turns out for this stuff. So why do companies waste so much time catering to this audience and, and using companies like consulting companies like fuck, they must be making a lot of fucking money because I think they're selling people a con essentially. So what do you guys make of this with the Powell group basically scrubbing everything? Let me know your thoughts down below and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for, for watching and hit that subscription button. Thank you.